Brother lads, welcome back to the Kwasi Arsenal podcast. My name is Kwasi. Welcome back to a brand new video. This is Arsenal news and transfer news as well. Arsenal have a draft agreement on personal terms with Victor Yokares. We're going to be diving into the story. Liverpool are very much interested in the striker as well. A price between the two clubs or between, you know, sporting and any club is expected to be a big problem this summer. But there is a draft agreement between Arsenal and Yokares on personal terms. We're also going to be diving into the Mikel Moreno situation as Real Sociedad are getting closer and closer to, rep uh, to signing his replacements. They have already confirmed one player and another uh, you know, another as well is coming in. We'll be talking about the, th uh, the fitness of Thomas Partey. It has been revealed by Charles West that Arsenal fear Thomas Partey's levels of fitness are not at the level where we expected they would be this precision. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. What do you think about Thomas Partey? What do you think about Victor Yokores? Um, you know, should Arsenal really go head, you know, head to head, toe to toe with Liverpool on this one? And Thomas Partey, if Arsenal are going to trust him, do you think this season he will stay fit? And do you think this season he's going to be a more reliable player? Now let's get into it. Let's start off with the big story on Victor Yokores. Uh, you know, he's still Arsenal's number one objective for a striker if we're going to get one this summer. And as a result, Result, Arsenal and the players' agents have already begun talks a long time ago. Additionally, Edu and Yokares were able to reach a draft agreement on personal terms or on a potential contract should Arsenal decide to sign the player this summer. So there is um, mutual interest between Yokares and Arsenal. There's no question about that. The player would love to move the, to the Emirates and Arsenal uh, you know, and Mikel Arteta also like the player as well. Personal terms for me were never going to be a problem and I think this is a deal that necessarily doesn't depend on whether you agree personal terms with a player or not. Jokovic looks at Liverpool and Arsenal as, you know, a big step in his career. So he's going to agree to Liverpool, he's going to agree to Arsenal as long as they approach him. The big question and the big challenge in this deal, can you agree a fee with sporting CP? Now, uh, CP is still saying we are strong. Our resolve is strong. Recently, what they have done, they have actually, uh, you know, bought some of the rights of the player from Coventry City. And that means that instead of a 15% ownership Coventry had, now they, had, uh, they have a 10% ownership in the player. So if they sell him right now, they'll be getting 90% revenue and uh, uh, you know Coventry City will be getting 10%. So because it's such a deal structured in that way, I think eventually uh, they will sell. I think Sporting CP will sell because there is that 10% uh, they have to give to Coventry if they sell. So I can see it as a deal that will happen, but I don't see it as a deal that will happen today or a deal that will happen tomorrow. Now, for me, personal terms are not surprised. I don't think that um, Yoko is, is earning 100000 or earning 90000 It's about doubling his wages. Um, you know, you could double his wages and he gets 100. You could double his wages and he gets 120. Uh, so th that is easy. That is the easy part. But the real part in this deal uh, is now agreeing a fee for the player. Can Arsenal do that? We are saying the price has to come down. Fabrizio said Arsenal look at this deal as unaffordable. They are not going to do it at the current standards, at the current, uh, at the current price. We are not going to do that. We are not going to trigger the release clause of the player. And what now makes this deal very complicated is the fellow brothers in red at Liverpool. Liverpool coming into this deal just puts an, uh, Arsenal under a lot of pressure. One, Liverpool can agree personal terms as well with Victor Yokoris. That's number one. And secondly, Liverpool can promise him that they can uh, give him the number nine shirt. Not really number nine, but they can give him more game time and they're willing to, uh, to make him their main striker as opposed to Arsenal, who currently have Gabriel Jesus and uh, Kai Havers as well. So Liverpool make this deal harder for Arsenal. Liverpool makes things you know, very, very complicated at the moment. And Liverpool, remember... They have not spent a single penny this summer. So if they decide to spend their first cash on Victor Yokares, we know they have the money. We know they have not spent any of their money. So they can just go out there and say, can you give us um, Yokares for 80 million? And, um, you know, a deal is done. And remember, they have done it before with, um, uh, Mat uh, with uh, Darwin Nunes. Nunes was on the market. A couple of clubs were interested. And then Liverpool just woke up and said, we are going to pay close to 100 million euros for Darwin Nunes. And the deal was done between them and FC Benfica. So it's, it's slightly similar to what they could do with Victor Jokoris. I'm very scared on this one. I'm not sure. Arsenal really have the resolve. Arsenal have the gravitational pull to 
Liverpool Yokares away from CP and away from Liverpool at the same time, you know, at a cheap price. So what we've got to do for me, the only solution and the only way I see it, if Arsenal really want to beat Liverpool on the Victor Yokares deal, is us going out there and, you know, paying what it takes. Now, I'm not saying overpay. I'm saying, can we start making bids that are sensible? Can we go in with maybe uh, 65 million? If that is turned down, can we go in with around 69, 70 million around there? I, I think a deal will be done for me, for Yokares. I, I won't be surprised if it is a team that we don't expect. Maybe Chelsea, maybe even Newcastle. You know, I I I'll give you an example. Last summer, was it last summer or last summer but one? I think it was last summer but one, before last summer. Lucas Paqueta was on the market, and uh, Arsenal were interested. Uh, Edu said, you know, it's not the player we're looking for. It's not the kind of deal we're looking for. Um, and, and he was uh, uh, on the market. And by the time we closed the market, Lucas Paqueta was a Western player. How that happened, I don't know. But this is very, very similar. And this uh, Yokari deal gives me the Lucas Paqueta deals. Available on the market for a whole summer, and then he ends up at Everton, he ends up at Aston Villa, he ends up at um, a club like even Atletico Madrid, because Atletico have been trying to sign Atem Dovic from Girona, but he ended up at Roma. So what if, uh, you know, ATMs look at him and, and they're like, let's go and sign Jokares. There are so many clubs that want a striker, and Arsenal are just behaving as if we are the pr princes of the market. Yeah, we are good. But we are not princes of the market. We are actually another ordinary club, another good club, uh, as good as ATM, as good as Chelsea, as good as all the other clubs. So an agreement on personal terms is important because um, that ties down the player and that allows you to uh, or gives you the go ahead to agree, pass, uh, to agree a deal with the other club. But it really doesn't mean so much uh, at this point, right? If um, the deal was easy, on, on, on club to club end, then personal terms really mean a lot because you don't want to agree a deal with, um, you know, maybe Sociedad and then the, you know, the, the player is taken or the player agrees personal terms with another club. But in this instant, it's actually more important to talk about the fee. It's actually more important to agree a price with, um, you know, the parent club than actually talking about personal terms. So personal terms in place, that's okay. Um, I mean, it's okay, that's good, but can we now move over to that fee? Can we try to find a solution on the price? Now, uh, the other story today is that um, Real Sociedad are moving closer and closer to letting go of Mikel Moreno. Today, they have announced the signing of Luka Sukic from RB Salzburg. They're also looking to sign Carlos Soler from, um, uh, they're looking to sign Carlos, Carlos Soler from PSG. Now, according to Fabrizio, uh, we are expecting the final round of talks as regarding the payment structure between Arsenal and Real Sociedad to take place to, um, and intensify tonight. Personal terms with the player already are great. So a final round of talks is going to happen between Sociedad and Arsenal to agree on the structure, to agree on everything. Everything has been agreed between player and club. Now, when the club starts getting replacements for you, you know your future at that club is over. Uh, unless uh, you are Arsenal, because at Arsenal, most of the case, uh, in most cases, we will sell a player and we'll find a replacement three years later. We sold Aubameyang, and right now it's like three years, you know, later we are looking for a decent number nine. We sold Messi Ozil, we didn't get a good number ten, uh, you know, right after until we got Odegaard. So it's only at Arsenal where you will sell a player and wait two years, three years, four years without getting a good replacement. Ever since we lost uh, Alexander Song Belong as a number six, it was many years since we signed Thomas Pate. So you, ca you, you understand. But what Social are, are doing is very, very smart. They're saying as we talk to Arsenal, as talks progress, we now feel the player is gone. We now feel that this deal is not going to uh, backtrack. We wanted 30 million euros. Arsenal have agreed to that. The structure, to hell with the structure, um, you know, we know we are going to get our money. So now they have started working on players that are going to come in to replace the player. Um, I don't really know about Lukas Sokic very much, but um, Carlos Soler, that one I understand. He was at Valencia before. Um, I understand his game, and I know he's a very, very good number eight. And I wouldn't be surprised if... Um, 
maybe at some point in time we get to see a player like Rabio at Real Sociedad or a player like uh, Fabian Ruiz at Real Sociedad. Those are the kind of signings that uh, Sociedad could actually make. So the deal is getting closed. Replacements are being lined up and are being worked on. One of them is already done. So Arsenal fans, just be patient. Let's wait and see what's going to come out of there. Now, Arsenal have some issues with fitness with regards to some players. First and foremost, it is doubtful whether Takeru Tomiyasu will feature in, in the remainder of preseason. Well, Kerentieni has already been ruled out. That is number one. Secondly, according to just words, uh, we have some concerns about Thomas Partey. Partey's fitness after Arsenal's three uh, uh, after after Arsenal's first three games in the US wasn't there uh, wasn't that good. Um, uh, he was saying uh, Charles was was saying that normally Thomas Partey would need a month of regular play to be able to reach be his best form. However, after three friendly matches, the Gaya the Ghanaian midfielder. Uh, and his current uh, situation compared to the end of last season has not shown any clear improvement. So there, th there are problems regarding fitness with Thomas Partey. I want to uh, I, I want to talk about Partey first because Partey is the one that I care uh, I care about most. Uh, Takeru Tomiyasu, I think Arsenal have enough cover in those areas. Like even if we sold Kivio, I think Arsenal are covered defensively. But with Thomas Partey, when we, are start, when we start getting reports, 17, 17 days to the start of the Premier League, that the player is actually known to the level we thought or we want him to be at, his fitness levels are not as, um, you know, as clear as you know, we, want, we want them to be. What did we expect? I think that's the big question. What did we expect of Thomas Partey's levels, right? When, when I started the, 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 the transfer summer coverage, and I remember saying my priority and our priority should be a defensive midfielder. And I also remember doing videos where I said, Ahmad Onana, Jean Neves, um, um, uh, you know, Yusuf Fana. I mentioned all those defensive midfielders. I talked about all those defensive midfielders, hoping that Aston were going to go out in the market and sign a very good DM. That has not happened. Aston have opted to sign a central midfielder over a defensive midfielder, which is okay. We have Declan Rice. But if we are thinking, and if we think that Thomas Partey is going to be a pillar that Aston hold on to, if we are thinking that Thomas Partey is going to be a player that Arsenal can rely on, we are the biggest fools in town. Honestly, we are the biggest fools in town because this is what you normally expect of Thomas Partey's season. He plays the first three games, he gets injured for the next 15 games, and then he comes back at the end of the season. That's what you expect. For the last two seasons, that's what we have seen. So how do you tell me that Arsenal have gone into a new transfer market and they have skipped over every defensive midfielder every dm that has been presented on the market we have uh, hit skip onana skip douglas lewis skip bruno bruno Gimarish, skip um zimendi skip kimmich skip if arsenal really fail to find a way of playing good football um you know because thomas party is injured or if we fail to win some games because Pate is injured next season, we have no one to blame but ourselves. This summer was clear. Everyone, everyone, every single media pundit thought about Arsenal's priorities in two ways. A striker and um, a midfielder. A defensive midfielder. If De Listen, if Declan Rice cops up well and becomes into... Uh, a very a very good single pivot then that's okay but for me the way i've seen declan rice and what we have seen so far rice would be much better as an eight and it would have been better if us signed a six this summer so with all the these reports that uh, thomas party's fitness is starting to worry people at arsenal why are we getting worried do you get worried when the normal happens because Thomas Partey picking up injuries early in the season, being unreliable, that is the normal. The abnormal would be 
Thomas Sparte playing at um, you know his best and Thomas Sparte playing whole you know whole season, that would be the, the the abnormal. So for me, I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised. I saw him in the Liverpool game and I was like, this Thomas Sparte guy doesn't really look good. And it's not that he wasn't playing very well. The guy is the guy is tired. Thomas Sparte is is how how old is Sparte? Like realistically, how old is Sparte? 31, 32. Sparte is tired. You can see it in his game. You can see it in his legs. When he's on the pitch, he's good. But does really Thomas Sparte play quality 90 minutes? He does not. Thomas Sparte plays a good 60 minutes, a solid 70 minutes, right? He's tired. Arsenal just don't want to agree. Arsenal just want, don't want to accept that we need another 50 million to reinvest in the defensive midfield. John Neves should have been our signing. Re realistically, John Neves, Joseph Fofana, Manuel Ugarte, all those players, as those interests must be registered. We cannot make the mistake of thinking that Pate is going to be there next season. And with Takira Tomiyasu and um, with Kiran Tiani, of course, he picked up an injury. There's nothing much you can say about that. He's injury prone. Um, I, I, we, we, I wish him a, sp a speedy recovery. Uh, with Takira Tomiyasu, He's not going to be part of our preseason. Uh, we thought he would be back for the Leverkusen and Leon games. That's not going to happen. Again, another injury pl 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 player. I mean, does that force us to keep Kivio? Probably. Maybe, probably not. Right? But um, Thomas Partey is the one that I think has bigger repercussions for Arsenal.